Hey, I'm Karen Da. Hi, and I'm Dr. Vishan Bimal from Caribbean Hindustani. Welcome to our weekly recap of Trinidad Bhojpuri words and phrase. So last week we had a lot of fun. It was it brought on so much conversation on air as well as online. So we're going to uh, just to go through these words that we chose for last week. We started the the week with lud baser, lud baser. Now I have to say, growing up, many of us we just heard lud baser without the actual d. So we just thought it was lud baser, and I think someone um, messaged that on Facebook as well. So it's lud baser. Yeah, it's a component to words. So lud meaning. So the original uh, context of the word is somebody who is, yes, unkempt, but somebody who is plumped or grotesque, right? Um, because lud, lud gives the context of somebody being, well, out of shape or do have a good figure. And besar is, is besar, it's, it's aspirated, um, mm-hmm. is a suffix added. So lud besar in Trinidad has come to mean a surname for puhar which would be somebody who is unkempt, untidy, does, thing lazy, does things lazy fair. Okay, so Lud Bhesar. Lud Bhesar. Lud Bhesar. Okay, Lud Bhesar. That's a long yeah. way from Lud Bhesar. Lud yeah. Bhesar. Okay, mm-hmm. got that. Uh, on Tuesday, we followed up with Peter Fuck. Now, many people today think that it's a mispronunciation or broken Hindi because we've grown accustomed to hearing Pitripaksh. It was quite interesting because when you use that expression, which would be a, a Pitarpak, a lot of people started associating things with ghosts and um, Halloween kind of things. Whereas if you say Pitripaksh, it doesn't give that connotation. So again, it represents when the term Pitri Paksh didn't really come into our vocabulary and it was uh, Peter Puck. Uh, the knowledge about what it was and the religious aspect wasn't really there. So it was quite interesting that that particular expression would have brought back certain negative memories. Um, but again, yes, uh, these are cognates of the Pitri Paksh in... Um, Cognates of the word the Pitri Paksh, which is informal Hindi in Trinidad Bhojpuri. So Pitri or Pitru, which means paternal or ancestral, becomes Pitar in Bhojpuri. And mm-hmm. Paksh, you tend to find that these Kshas and these um, Tras, they do exist in Trinidad Bhojpuri. They split them up into two separate syllables. So Ksha becomes Ka, right? Just like how you have Kshetra becomes Ket in modern standard Hindi. So in the same way you get puck, and a puck means la is is a fortnight, either the dark or the light fortnight of the month. So the Peter puck would be the um, fortnight dedicated towards the ancestors. Okay, so this really was accurate for Trinidad Bhojpuri. Peter puck. Yeah, Peter puck. Because if you go in places in India, especially in the UP Bihar area, that's what you hear. Peter puck. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, we had some midweek fun. Midweek fun with, uh, <laughs> it's a common outburst that we'd hear in Bollywood movies as well as those Indian soups. And, uh, you know, as children growing up, you probably heard it a few times as well. Yeah, okay, yeah. some adults too. So our midweek uh, word, uh, phrase was chupraho. Even that some people might know, but like, for instance, people kind of, um, mesh the two into one word, chuprao, chuprao, right? Chupraho becomes chuprao. So that um, I would have heard people who don't speak the language, but at the time I was only individuals in the 50s or the 60s, would say chuprao, which is chupraho, right? Um, but chup, as I said, means chup means quiet, silent, as in chupke, chupke, chori, chori, chupke, chupke, stealthily, stealthily, quietly, quietly. Um, uh, and uh, rehena means to stay, rehe means to stay. So raho is the is the um, command form. So chup raho actually really literally means keep quiet. Keep quiet. 
there was another phrase that someone had posted on facebook which was mubandkar yeah um so that uh, that one actually means literally means shut or close your mouth mm-hmm. right um so that expression would be understood by people who um speak trinidad bhojpuri but mm-hmm. it was not expression that i guess was as frequent as chupraho right but they basically mean the same well one means keep quiet and you know it means shut sh- in a crude way saying shut your shut mouth or oh, close right. your mouth yeah yeah <laughs> band means to close move his okay. mouth and move yeah. his mouth right okay um oh well on thursday we have the word but one and oh gosh i have to say that i loved it i really really loved it that we chose this word because we had so many different descriptions from cooking night to bachelor's night to party night to ladies to get the way night uh, but I one mean, honestly i didn't really grow up with the word but when i started to go to the netherlands and suriname um it was quite quite, quite commonly used so um it's common even in youth in the netherlands to say something like they go into but one tonight right mm-hmm. um but essentially it means cooking what, what what people what, what people tend to forget is that the format of the wedding or the hindu wedding has changed over time for the sake of convenience right um for instance the second sunday and the wednesday when the girl leaves is that even though it's within a week the time period is actually much longer during um that right you had a betrothal first um before the pre-pubescent years and then the girl will go back and live in her mother's house and then have to come back um on what we say with a second sunday but people who have we have child marriages anymore or to children getting married at 12 13 and 14 um and the whole wedding celebration and what would have taken place has been condensed into three days but it was actually an entire week right leading up to and it was not a sunday as we have now it was whatever the lagan was or the day that the pandit right. said would be the auspicious day so everything would lead up to that day whatever day it a day it falls on and the trip the bride the bridegroom had to take was a night trip so he would leave in the evening it's called a night wedding he leave in the evening they get married throughout the night and then they would come back right so actually the bhatwan would have led into that wedding would have which would have taken place at the night period so it was it was a period of constant entertainment because you couldn't have these people doing these marriage rituals which would get boring so you had women singing song yes but then during periods of where they would have breaks in the ritual they would have local classical singing um but at, at the if the now condense in the three days which would be friday right we will do the friday night i wouldn't say what it is because we'll use it for <laughs> with in the next segment um <laughs> then from um, the cooking night or bhat one now i remember when i had told you about that word and why it was significant is yeah. bhat one comes from bhat right um and if you would see that a lot of the which is the cooking night a lot of staples would be cooked which would be rice rice the biggest thing was cooking let's see the roti or the rice cuz it a hariyade would use a big pot to cook it for everybody um and also the pachinari lao would take place again center around rice so you see yeah. rice represents in indian tradition hindu tradition and indian tradition prosperity or fertility of the land um and that's not only in hindu traditions but you see it in a lot of marriage ceremonies where the rice is that significance of granting auspiciousness or granting uh, prosperity to the new couple to have children and so so again it centers around that but also remember there was a journey that would take place so carbohydrate loading was very much in vogue then so even the whole idea of the cooking that would take place not only the night but it would take place throughout the day itself and even throughout the entire week because they would cook continue continually cook right um and they would have to have meals the the the, the barat or the baratians would eat their stomachs full especially with rice and then to go to the the agwani side of the bride the bride's house um so it was centered around that carbohydrate loading for the journey and spending the night and coming back so th- that's how you get it in bhatwan for the night of preparing the rice in whatever fashion or form i did not know all of this i have to confess 
I did not know all of this. I, I just thought, oh, it was cooking night and rice was uh, just um, an important part of the diet. It was a big part of your diet. So that's basically what happened on cooking night. But Exactly. And is it then that on um, part one, you'd also have beta gana? Well, um, how I, how growing up, I know usually the traditional songs of the woman would take place on the Friday night. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the Friday night, they tend to not wake all night, but then the cooking night was when they wake all night. So growing up, I know in that condensed form of a one week or sometimes even longer um, tradition, the local classical would have been on the Batuan night, right? Mm -hmm. But remember, we did away with these these uh, these uh, night weddings. Well, what I think is that what used to happen is that the Baratian side with Tassa, with musicians, would go. So even the, the, the bridegroom side would carry their singers to have oh. competitions and sing. And one important thing is that people fail to realize the Indian contribution towards peacock singing or extempo. So on Friday, as usual, we wrap up the week with a food-related word. And this provoked such intense conversations, especially on Facebook. Now, I have to say that many people who texted into the, the show, the radio show, um, just took a wild guess based on certain clues and hints that were given. Not many actually knew the meaning. Just a few remembered hearing it. Um, but on Facebook, we had so many different versions of Arui. That was the word that we used on Friday. Right. And uh, again, that, that was a word that kind of was on the way out. Because, I mean, most people my generation would know it as Edo's. Um, and I remember even in formal Hindi classes, they were called Arbi, which is the Hindi word. Um, but... Both words, even Arui, from what I got, get to understand, is that is any tuba the size of Edo's. So, for instance, even though Arui was Edo specifically, Dashin Bush Baji Dashin was Arui Ke Patta. So, it means that it implied that even the Dashin was Arui. So, Arui specifically, in a generic sense, uh, would mean any small yam, any mm -hmm. small Dashin, or Edo's. So, any root. That was small, any carbohydrate, uh, carbohydrate roots that that was relatively small, because even in the small yams they call arui as well. But I remember specifically it being referred to specifically referring to just edos in Trinidad right. or in Trinidad Bhojpuri. Now, someone on Facebook mentioned tarui. Yeah, taro. Um, uh, taro or taru, um, that, that is a Hindi, another Hindi word for the same um, Edo's. Um, but again, it's quite dexterous because it doesn't mean Edo's only. Uh, it mm -hmm. represents a lot of the, come from that particular family of um, roots that uh, we would normally cook. All right. So that takes care of this week. So we had blood pacer. We had uh, pitar puck. We had chupraho. But one and Arui. We yeah. did really well this week. Um, so we'll have uh, fresh words and a phrase up in the coming weeks. So we want to extend our thank you so very much to all of you who participate in Trinidad Bhojpuri words and expressions, especially those of you outside of Trinidad and Tobago, because you expose us to your version of the, the words and uh, the usage and, and the context in which uh, these words are used, which, of course, makes uh, this whole project so much more exciting. And it's a, it's a great way for us, uh, obviously, to augment our knowledge and our appreciation for Trinidad Bhojpuri. So I'm Karen Das. And I'm Dr. Visham Mal from Caribbean Hindustani. Don't forget to check out Caribbean Hindustani Facebook page and CaribbeanHindustani.org online for more content that is relevant, uh, at least the Caribbean or the Hindustani that is uh, spoken in the Caribbean. Okay. Great to see you again, Dr. Bima. Bye. Looking forward to the words this week. Bye.